Welcome to this edition of the Golden Rule. And uh, that's taken out of the Bible. Jesus said, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And so I'm going to do that today. I normally have an interview thing going here, but uh, today I just want to share with you out of the Word of God because this is so exciting. You don't know who Alice Crow is, but when she was 85 years old, God put me in the path of this lady who was an invalid and she was a shut in and, and uh, she just couldn't do much of anything. But I challenged her to memorize scripture and she she resisted. She said, I can't do that, Barry. I am too old. Don't expect me. I can't remember anything. Anyway, two months later, she had memorized all of Psalm 91. It's a long story, but I won't go into it. But anyway, Psalm 91 is the most condensed, comprehensive 16 verses in the whole Bible. It lists all of God's promises lumped into one short psalm. And I want to take you through it because I want you to be encouraged by this. It starts out saying, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now that sounds like kind of highfalutin talk. What's he talking about? It simply means he that spends time with God will experience God in a way that he wouldn't have otherwise. So we need to spend time with the Lord. And then the second verse says, I will say of the Lord, I will say, that's with my mouth, I have to verbalize it. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. And that's something that we have to remind ourselves of constantly. God is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Now listen to the verse 3. Surely, surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Surely he shall deliver you. That means you'll escape from the snare of the fowler. That's talking about somebody who traps birds. A snare is the trap. The fowler is the trapper. He sets traps to trap birds. And the devil is setting traps for people all the time. And if they're not aware of it, they get caught in them. He shall uh, deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Pestilence is an obnoxious, contagious, infectious disease of any kind. Surely, God says, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Deliver you. That means it won't bother you. Get more of that in a few minutes. Verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. This is truth, folks. If you're looking for truth, this is where you find it. This is the only place on the face of the planet where you will find absolute 100% truth in every word you read. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. That's part of the armor of a warrior. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid. 365 times in the Bible, God says, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. He doesn't want us to be afraid of anything ever. Thou shalt not be afraid for what? Four things. The terror by night, the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Four things. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. That's where terrorists operate at night. Robbers, thieves, bad people. They operate at night. You shall not be afraid of them, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Oh, have you heard about the wars and the bombs and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, I've heard about it. They don't scare me. What? Don't you, you're not, you're not afraid? No, I'm not afraid. Why? Because God tells me not to be afraid. Simple. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. Oh, have you heard about the disease? Have you heard about the problems? Have you heard about the bugs, the flu, the this, the that? It's going around. It's going around. Well, it can go around me because God says I don't need to be afraid of 
any of those things, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Oh, have you heard about the earthquakes? Oh, have you heard about the tornadoes, the tsunamis, the blizzards, everything? Have you heard about all that? Yeah, I heard about it. Aren't you afraid? No, why not? Because God says, I'm not supposed to be afraid of any of these things. Do you know how many people are terrorized by all these kinds of natural disasters and diseases and everything else? Because the news media programs them to be terrorized. Oh, it's going to snow. It's going gonna, it's gonna to snow. Yeah, it always snows. And it may be a foot or more. We survive it, don't we? Yes, we do. We just keep on going on with life. It's not the end of the world, a little snowstorm. Verse 7, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. This is God talking. This is God's promise to us. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall ye behold and see the reward of the wicked. You know, when there's, a, when there's a big disaster, a lot of people die. A lot of people die. Thousand at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Are you not supposed to believe this? You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe this book. You do not have to believe it. But God says, if you want my protection, you'll believe what I'm promising you. And then he says, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague Come nigh your dwelling. I'm going to read that again. There shall no evil befall you. How much is no evil? Zero. Zilch. None. Nada. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. This is God talking. He's promising us protection from all kinds of things. How does he do it? Verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They'll bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Do you believe in angels? I mean, serious Bible version angels, invisible entities that you don't see on a regular basis, but they're all around you all the time. God says he'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Angels have hands. Oh man, I fell a couple of weeks ago. I slipped on some ice. And you know, when you hit the, the black ice, boom, I mean, you're done. Well, I went down, but I didn't crash down. I floated. It was the most amazing thing. I didn't hit the ground. I was lowered to the ground. Well, how do you explain that? Angels. I explain it by angels. God says, I'll give, his, I'll give my angels charge of you. If you slip, if you stumble, they'll catch you. Some of you aren't getting this. You're saying, that's a bunch of baloney. No, that's God talking. Then he says, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Here he's talking about demons, demonic activity. He says, you'll have all power. I've given you all power and all authority over them also. You believe in demons? If you believe in angels, you got to believe in demons. If you don't believe in angels, then you probably don't believe in demons. That doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means you're ignoring them, which is a very unwise thing to do. Now, listen to this. Uh, 
starting in verse 14, 15, and 16, God starts speaking first person. And he says, because he, that's you, me, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Deliver him. That's the second time he talked about delivering us. That means protection. God offers divine, supernatural protection for us. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You know, the Bible says, if you can hear this, we right now, the believer, is seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. We are actually seated alongside of Jesus in the spirit realm, not in the physical realm. We're here in our bodies. But in the spirit realm, we are seated next to Jesus himself. I'll set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me. Do you ever feel like you need to call upon the Lord? Things are getting tough. Oh, God, help me. Yeah, he shall call upon me. And God says, I'll answer him. I will answer him. That's a promise. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Oh. I shouldn't. I'm not a singer. I, God says, I will be with him in trouble. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And then listen to this. I love this verse. With long life will I satisfy him. I like that verse. I've got about 37 years left in my lifespan. I'm only 83 and I'm going for 120. You know, Moses lived to be 120 years old and the Bible says when he was 120, his eye was not dim, nor was his natural force abated. In fact, when he hit 120, God invited him to climb a mountain to attend his own funeral because God says, come on up here. You're done. I'm done with you, and I'll bury you when you get here. <laughs> Do you believe any of this stuff? Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe Moses was actually 120 years old? Do you believe God actually spoke to him? God is always speaking to all of us. Not many people are listening, but that doesn't mean he doesn't speak. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. All of those promises apply to the person in verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my fortress, my God. You know, you think about this. The Almighty God lives inside of a believer. Does he get stressed about anything? Does he chew his fingernails? Does he wring his hands and say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do? No. He doesn't get afraid of any of that kind of stuff. And that's why he tells us to fear not, because he is on the inside of every true born again believer. Resident in your life, resident in my life, there to protect me and to provide for me and to feed me thoughts, information that I need to function in this life. He's that, he's that concerned. About, he's concerned about every little detail of our lives. Well, you know what? This has been great. I've enjoyed so much talking to you today. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you heard something that you think somebody else might be interested in, tell them to watch because this, this thing plays 42 times every week on a three hour, four hour cycle. It just keeps repeating over and over again. So if you hear me at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you can also hear me at 3 o'clock in the morning or at 7 o'clock in the morning or at 7 o'clock at night. And if you can't watch it on cable, then go to lakestv3.com. Look up under archives. You can watch it there. The Golden Rule. Scroll down to The Golden Rule. Well, thanks again for watching today. You may have been watching accidentally or you might have thought it was an accident. It's no accident. God wanted to tell you all the good and wonderful promises he has for your life. So, till next week, God bless you.